as well use the step. <laughs> May I speak in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Now, I don't know if I've said this before or not, but I do love a good sci-fi film. And one of my favourites is Men in Black, particularly the first one. And there's a scene in that where the two lead actors, Tommy Lee Jones and Will Smith, are stood looking up into the, uh, the beauty of the heavens. And Tommy Lee Jones turns around and says, I never really look at them anymore, but they are quite beautiful. He has become so wrapped up in his work chasing aliens that he has forgotten just how beautiful God's creation really is. And in our reading from the third chapter of Paul's letter to the Ephesians, we are reminded through this simple prayer that the church is called to provide people with the means through which they can have communion and fellowship with God, Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit. St Paul rises above culture and tradition in order to show readers that God is a parent to all humanity. The author is spiritually aware that God is inclusive <coughs> for all people, nations, genders and ethnicities. In other words, the language of family is in St Paul's heart, mind and soul. So my question is, have we lost something of this concept in today's modern world? Have we forgotten the beauty of the world we live in and the love of our Creator God? In 1952, a bit before my time, but British scripture scholar and translator J.B. Phillips wrote a book with the rather provocative title, Your God is Too Small. He said the trouble with many people today is that they've not found a God big enough for modern needs. It could be argued that he may well be right. Someone writing today may well title their book, Your God is Too Small and Too Distant. The challenge for many people today is finding a God who is big enough to embrace the world and close enough to fill their inner emptiness. It could be said that many of us do have a God who is too small. Without knowing it, many have tightly packed our glorious God into a box and have substituted a constrained and punitive God for the great and gracious God revealed in the history of Israel and in the life, death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. The substitute God some have fashioned is limited, narrow and tame. There's nothing surprising or amazing, and is boxed in by our preconceptions. This God could be considered stingy with mercy, and has only enough love for our kind of people, our nation, tribe, race, family, or social class. This God of man's making is predictable, safe, and boring. Some would also argue that such a God is hardly worthy of praise. So they shore up worship with louder volume and shine it up with greater glitz. They allow less time to silence because this passive God couldn't possibly have anything crucial or even interesting to say. Many don't expect this reduced deity to restore, redeem or transform anyone or anything. Since the best they can hope for is sympathy and advice, faith then becomes little more than a coping way, rather than the inbreaking of an entirely new and saving order of things. Our God is too small and too distant. Do you remember Bette Midler's hit song, From a Distance, which turned out to be very popular with many Christians? Many would argue that its simple refrain summarises a lacklustre faith. I'm not going to sing it, but God is watching us, God is watching us, God is watching us from a distance. Unfortunately, many Christians believe in a remote, passive and merely observant God. This faraway God doesn't come close enough to nourish and sustain us. 
Indeed, this God enlightens us about how to fend for and feed ourselves, rather than being the bread of life for our hungry hearts. This God is like a report from the agriculture department about anticipated wheat production. A small and distant God leaves us feeling overwhelmed by change and threatened by emptiness. We have all been through so much in this past 18 months and it is still lingering on. So most of us wouldn't deny that we're living through an era of massive transition and change. What's occurring in our culture, our world today, could be compared to the shifting of the giant tectonic plates which lie beneath the surface of the earth. The slightest movement of those massive plates can rip apart the surface of the earth in an earthquake or cause a violent eruption of volcanoes. These giant plates in our culture are shifting relentlessly beneath us. The shifts create huge dislocations in our lives. The landscape is losing its comfortable familiarity. The shifts include economic changes. In the last few years, we've had a roller coaster stock market, banking, and foreclosure crises, plummeting property values and escalating unemployment. Worldwide changes, whether because we deal with neighbours who are different from us or because we encounter diversity through the media, nearly all of us live in a multicultural, multi-ethnic and multi-faith environment. Every day we rub shoulders with people who see and experience the world very differently than we do. Technological changes. We're on the grid, or could be 24-7, 365. A lot of us have at least two email addresses to check. There are messages posted on our Facebook walls, text messages buzzing into our phones, and tweets twittering to and from Twitter. There are blogs to read and to update, and voicemails for two or three mobile phones to check. We don't know yet what it will mean for the way our minds work. That we're constantly connected and on the grid, but we already know that greater volume and velocity of information doesn't always lead to deeper wisdom and richer relationships. Some of the changes bewilder and frustrate us. Others amaze and delight us. Whether we consider them positive or negative, the shifts keep happening and the ground beneath our feet doesn't feel solid anymore. All the while, we're also trying to cope with more immediate and personal changes. Illness, family crisis, challenges at work and school, the limitations imposed by the ageing, yeah, I know that one not too well. And the inevitable transitions brought on by the simple passing of time. Everyone is temporary. Everything is fleeting. Our vulnerability to change sometimes overwhelms us. And when it does, a small God can't help us. And a distant God can't do anything about the emptiness which threatens to engulf us. We all live through seasons which demand more than we can possibly deliver. Work grinds on, but our energy is long gone. Needs pile up, but we're at risk of caving in. Opportunities multiply, but we're divided. The schedule is jammed full, and our hearts are alarmingly empty. Maybe that's how things are for many of us right now. We've spent our emotional accounts into near bankruptcy. We're way over our limits. We've maxed out our soul. Foreclosure on our identity has begun. We're at risk of losing who we most truly are. Most days, most of us just get out of bed, put on our uniforms of responsibility, our practice facades of can-do optimism, our masks of habit and our armour of protection and do what we have to do. 
There's a kind of grace in our being able to do so. But to know from listening to people's hearts that there are a lot of people, more than you might imagine, who worry and wonder about how much longer they can cope with all the demands, respond to all the pressures, and meet all the expectations they feel bearing down on them. Eventually, the emptiness threatens to consume us. It moves to take over everything else. When it does, a small and distant God can't help us. Thankfully, as Paul's prayer for the Ephesian Christians reminds us, we don't have a small and distant God. The real God, revealed to us in the history of Israel and in the life, death and resurrection of Jesus Christ, is magnificent, mysterious and mighty. Paul prayed, I pray that according to the riches of God's glory, God may grant that you may be strengthened in your inner being with power through the Spirit, and that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith, as you are being rooted and grounded in love. I pray that you may have the power to comprehend with all the saints what is the breadth, the length, and height and depth, and to know the love of Christ that surpasses knowledge, so that you may be filled with all the fullness of God. The real God is vast beyond our comprehending, beautiful beyond our anticipating, and wonderful beyond our imagining. God encompasses everything, past, present and future, near and far, <coughs> what we have discovered and what remains hidden. God is above and beyond, among and within, high and holy, close and compassionate. God's great love leaves us breathless with us astonishment. Paul prayed that we would know what he admitted was beyond knowing, the breadth, the length and the height and depth of love. It includes everyone and everything, radiates with a redeeming grace which envelops all our shame and guilt and shines with a dazzling glory which fills every shadowy corner of our hearts and of the universe with hope. Thankfully, this prayer isn't a list of assignments for us to carry out or expectations to meet or demands to shoulder. The God who has been made known and real to us in Jesus isn't standing over us with a clipboard and a checklist. There is nothing in this prayer that hints at a self-help project or a self-improvement program. The prayer simply and compellingly invites us to realise how much God loves us, to experience God's surrounding, encompassing and holding us with love. And it promises us that God will fill us when we're empty, make us strong when we're weak, and keep us rooted and grounded when everything is changing. We are all invited to experience this prayer for ourselves. All we need to do is ask God to thrill us again with a sense of wonder and majesty, to fill us with God's own life, and to show us all that we can comprehend about the wide embrace of divine love. Receive God's strength so that we may live faithfully and joyfully in these challenging times of change. Open ourselves to God's fullness so that the once empty places in us may overflow with abundance and glory. Brothers and sisters, we have a vast, loving and powerful God who is at work within us and is able to accomplish abundantly far more than all we can ask for or imagine. To that God be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus to all generations, forever and ever. And the thing that puts it in perspective for me is the closing scene in Men in Black One. <laughs> we have two giant aliens, can't describe how big they are. 
and they're playing a simple game of marbles. If each got a bag of marbles, the old playground game that we play. But each one of the marbles contains an entire galaxy reduced to that. The mind blowing thing is, our God is even bigger than that and greater than that. Mm. Let us pray. Vast and loving God, give us minds filled with thoughts of your bright glory, hearts overflowing with the joy of your love, and wills strengthened by your tender power, so that we may live in the world with confidence and compassion. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen.